Yeah, uh, obviously, thanks so much for coming out. Um, we're really excited about uh, what, what's gone on here in the last, uh, you know, couple months as far as guys getting ready. We're a couple weeks away uh, from, from having that four-hour period of time a week lifted to 20 hours where we officially start practice. And uh, we couldn't be more excited about having a throwback game and, and honoring our past and, and uh, playing a game uh, here in Barnhill. We think it'll be awesome for the fans. And, and again, there's just so much tradition and history here that, uh, that we kind of wanted to have a fun night. And, and uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy it. And we'll open it up for any questions. I guess, Eric, what, what was the inspiration for this? Was it your idea? Did somebody mention to you how 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 this come about? I mean, I think that any you know any decision that we make is always um, you know our whole staff, like the coaching staff, the administration, marketing. Um, we're constantly trying to throw different ideas at each other and come up with different things. I've you know I've stated a ton that uh, growing up in San Diego, California, as a young uh, person, that um, Arkansas was was a you know, I know all the history really, really well. And, um, you know, we felt like a throwback night. Our players wearing uh, Team Eddie and, and Team Nolan uniforms. And uh, maybe we can get the fans interested in, in dressing up, you know, in some throwback uh, gear themselves. And, and um, you know, I just felt like a traditional red and white game. It's, you know, it's kind of been done in the past and, and to do something new and different. And this might be the only time that, you know, we play basketball back here. And so it's, it's a kind of a neat thing. As far as, as your schedule that was announced in general, just, you know, what do you feel about it and, and how much do you feel the non-conference will prepare you for the SEC? Yeah, we feel like it's a very challenging non-conference, uh, especially when you, you know, if you look across our conference, uh, there's not many teams that are playing or programs that are playing uh, three true road games. And, and obviously I've looked back in the history of, 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 of Arkansas's basketball schedule and there's not a lot of years where you have three true road games. You might have some neutral site games. but um, And then we feel like some of the, the, the programs that are coming in here um, to play uh, you know, in Bud Walton are, are challenges as well. There's, there's a lot of programs that we feel are going to be are going to win their league or have an opportunity or a chance uh, to win their conference and so that becomes really really important as you get towards um, you know March and and selection Sunday type deal is, is you want to at least put yourself in a chance and when you look at uh, some of the people that were playing some you know northern Kentucky for instance is a is a program that's won a lot of games they got a lot of starters back so uh, we feel like it's a really really challenging with the road games and then uh, playing TCU here at home there's a there's there's it's a challenging slate in our opinion do you have any particular recollections of watching you know big games on TV that were in Barn Hill or any players you know from those 70s, 80s, early 90s. Well, there's no doubt with the triplets and, and um, you know, just having the opportunity to, uh, you know, to fly the Hall of Fame, you know, last week and sit with, with Ron Brewer Sr. and to, to, to sit with Marvin um, and talk stories. And, um, you know, a lot of the players in that era I'm so familiar with. And, and um, yeah, I remember cover Sports Illustrated and um, there's no question that, uh, you know, those three guys in Sydney, I mean, somebody my age that loves basketball, um, you're going to know who those three guys are for sure. Did, uh, did you get a chance to tell those guys in, in um, Springfield that you were going to play a game in Barnhill? And if so, what was their reaction? I, we didn't get a chance to talk to it because administration, we were still trying to figure it out. This was a you know, something that we've we've kind of talked about for a while, but still wanted to try to work out the logistics part of it. And uh, we're still trying to find a date and a time. And so uh, we really didn't want to talk about it, you know, externally to anybody until we knew we were going to do it. And, um, you know, it was really yesterday, yesterday morning when we decided that, that this thing was going to be able to happen. And, and um, so I, I haven't talked to him yet about it.
saw you tweet this, but you, your dad uh, recruited Sydney to Minnesota. Yep, one of right? one of Sydney's uh, one of Sydney Moncrief's visits was to the University of Minnesota. The problem was it snowed in Minnesota, and it was like September, mid September. So I think when he got a hold of the snow in, in mid September at a football game, he decided Arkansas is probably a better place for him. Are you hoping to have some of the former players come back for the red white game? Yes, that have played in here because a lot of them live you know in the state. Yeah, no question. I had a great talk with Coach Richardson the other day because one of the first things we wanted to do is is you know make sure that uh, I wanted to make sure that that he thought it was a good idea and and he certainly did and he talked about a lot of the things that he had done in the past uh, from a marketing standpoint and so forth and uh, yes we're going to reach out to as many players as we can invite them back. Um, without a question, that's something that we're going to start doing, you know, as early as next week. I think there would have been, you know, kind of a new vibe about the red-white game in Walton just because it would be, you know, fans' first chance to get a look at you guys. But having it in Barnhill, are you expected to be kind of know, electric or, not, you know, a little more, you know, uh, juice than your normal inner squad game? Yeah, I mean, we that was kind of the reason that, that all of us as a group felt that it would be a good idea is, again, um, once you've done something for two or three years, you you know you always want to try to come up with something new, and um, you know we think that for for our students to see a basketball game in here, and then for it's not just about people that have seen games in here in the past. It's also about some people that have never seen a basketball game in here, and so uh, to me, it's 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 going to be a great night. It's going to be different. It's unique. We want to have fun. Um, you know, and hopefully as we get closer to the game, we'll continue to come up with some new ideas to make that night a special night. Coach, do you have details like on the logistics, getting the hoops in here, the floor, obviously, because it'll be in the middle of volleyball season. What are you guys looking at getting this place ready to play basketball? I mean, I'm not really a, an expert on uh, on what we're going to do. I, we're, you know, probably going to be some baskets that aren't really anchored down, so we're not going to be doing tomahawk dunks. Um, but it, 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 we'll, we're going to play a game. We want it to be competitive because we're going to use it as an evaluation tool. Uh, but we'll probably, you know, use some tape, but it'll look good. Um, but obviously, you know, with volleyball being in season, we don't want to do anything to disrupt that at all. And, um, but again, I think from a cosmetic, it'll look really cool by the time we, we start playing the game. fans might I guess Arkansas played in here from you know the 50s into the early 90s I mean do you have a like you want a disco theme or an 80s theme or what would you like to see people or 60s hippies what would you like to see people wear I don't know we haven't talked about that yet but but against eventually we will we'll, we're going to come up with what what year we want this thing to kind of look like you maybe wear like a I don't know a wide tie and a Checkered, uh, like a I mean, sport. I'm already, I'm, I'm already ready. Yeah. But I'm, I, I'll come up with something else. I mean, I thought you'd be impressed by this, Bob. No. Yeah, no, it's, it's very, it's very nice. Um, and uh, hey, is there, is there any update on, on, on Connor Vanover's uh, waiver with the yep. NCAA? Uh, so there's been no update at all, one way or another. And so, uh, you know, we'll just continue to wait and, and uh, you know, we're, I mean, we're, we're practicing as if, uh, as if he's, you know. A transfer and would have to sit out, but we're hopeful, uh, you know, that we'll get a different word. But, but uh, you know, right now it's 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 about practicing. It's about Connor getting better. Uh, so whether he was eligible to play or whether he was sitting out, we'd still have the same approach from a from a player development standpoint right now. And we don't really need a decision until about a week before because we're going to we're going to practice a certain way and 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 really not do our game prep stuff until about a week before we play Rice. You know, the NCAA kind of moves at their own pace. A lot of times it's not the fastest pace. Um, are you confident you guys will get some kind of resolution to it before the season starts? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that that there'll be a decision before the season and 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 we're like I said we're not really Internally, we're not talking about it at all because it's 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 a matter of how do we get our guys better from a player development standpoint, um, and we're not really zoned in on, you know, is JD Note playing or not? We're just trying to get better as a group. I saw um, the other day you, your guys worked it out with the track team. I don't know if that was a one-time deal or if they'd been. How, how did that come about? Did you go to the track coach and say, hey, we want to? Or just, yeah, what, what was going on with that? And how'd you think that went? It went great. Um, our guys really liked it. A couple of our players tweeted out about it, that they really liked it. It was unique and different. I just think that from a basketball standpoint, things can get stale. 
and you always want to try to kind of jolt them, let them have some fun. That's why we did, you know, boxing. That's why we've done spin. That's why, you know, we want to try to always get them a little bit out of their comfort zone, but where they're also having fun. Um, and then that's, you know, the neatest thing about college athletics. Doesn't matter what sport you're coaching on a college campus, but it's really a family. And uh, some of the track coaches are my friends. We live in the same neighborhood, a few of us. And, and we were just talking one night about basketball players and how they run, to be honest. And um, I think that our guys learn something, even technique-wise, running. Um, and so we've ta we talked about doing it more than once. I don't know if we will, just because of time constraints with them and us. Um, but it was good for our guys. I think it was good for camaraderie. I know that now our guys know the track group a little bit better and vice versa and I think that's 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 the neatest thing about being on a college campus. Was that last week when you guys did that? It was uh Monday. Monday was yep. Okay. Hey, about your your coaching staff, when you were hiring your three assistants, what what kind of appealed um, most to you specifically about those three guys? Yeah, the questions was about the assistant coaches um, I you know, I talked a lot with administration about our staff, just because I, you know, Hunter and John have have been doing college athletics for, for long and they're experts at it. So I wanted to get different perspectives, not just, you know, a perspective of, of my view. But I did, we did, I did for sure wanted a former head coach at the Division One level. And obviously, Corey Williams uh, checks that box. And uh, I wanted a former NBA player on staff. I felt that was important from a recruiting standpoint, and it was important for our guys that want to play at the next level. Corey checks that box. Uh, and then I wanted somebody that, that I had worked with in the past that knew our system and knew our terminology and our play calls and how to put in drills. And obviously, Clay Mosier and I have worked together at six or seven different spots. So he's overly familiar with in-game situations and how, how I would react or what we want to do on wrinkles in plays late game and so forth. And then uh, Clay, having 17 years of NBA experience, is, is you know, really big in recruiting to have somebody that was you know on a staff coaching LeBron James last year uh, and then obviously coach Crutch I felt that it was overly vital uh, to have somebody that had coached uh, and recruited uh, in this region and had done it at the power five level and, and obviously coach Crutch coming from Oklahoma filled that box and so we feel extremely excited about who we have as a staff and I think that uh, they're a really good complement because they all have completely different backgrounds. Yeah, speaking of your staff, I think I guess right, your son's the recruiting coordinator but then you also have a recruiting director. Obviously recruiting is important. I'm not sure I've ever heard of that. Is that just an indication of how much you stress recruiting? Or what, uh... Yeah, I mean I think that you know, the, the college athletics, when you look at staff sizes, uh, regardless of the sport, they continue to grow. Um, and when you think about recruiting graphics, uh, you know, a lot of recruits are getting graphics on a daily basis. Um, even four years ago, you know, when I started at Nevada, you were doing kind of mail outs and maybe a graphic once a week uh, for one of your top recruits. And so, uh, social media touching your players in different areas you know it's we're always trying to find new ideas and I think both uh, Pat Eckerman uh, and Michael uh, both those guys because of their age and being close uh, to the same age as the guys are recruiting are vital I'm 54 years old and and what I think might be really cool it's good to have those two guys saying hey that ain't so cool <laughs> Same lines. You've there's been some pretty funny pictures of you on Twitter, like recreating famous photos. Is that something your idea? How do how the recruits pick what poses, or how does that go down? Yeah, it was really interesting. Uh, a lot of the stuff we do that's outside the box just kind of happens organically, and uh, one of our recruits obviously can't name names, but he kind of had the ball in his hands, and I got in a defensive stance, and someone took a picture, and then. Some national media guys picked that up, and then we had a recruit come on campus, and he thought it was a scene of an NBA situation. And then right when that was brought up, it was like, all right, bang, you know, here we go. And so uh, it's turned into now 
recruits that have not been on campus are texting us and saying, hey coach, and they'll send a picture and say, can we do this scene uh, if I come on an official or an unofficial visit? So it's, it's taken on a life of its own. It's been uh, great for the, for the prospective student athletes. The high school guys love it. Um, we don't ask anymore. They, they actually come to us with, with what they want to do. And, you know, everybody in the country is taking a picture with their arm around a recruit. And now this kind of separates us. And, and the great thing is, if anybody tries to emulate it, it's old news. So we kind of started it and we're going to keep rolling with it and no copycatters. Um, yeah, getting back to the schedule, I mean, just how tough a schedule do you think it is? How challenging? I guess you kind of want to walk a fine line. You got to win games, but you got to have a good enough resume to make the NCAA tournament, too. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we honestly feel, you know, playing at Georgia Tech, uh, playing at Indiana, playing at Western Kentucky, uh, some of the mid majors that we feel have an opportunity to win their conference. Uh, and some of the games were already set up you know, before we got the job, and then there was some that, uh, that we put together. And so, uh, you know, Anthony Ruta does the schedule, and he does an incredible job. If you look at the schedule in Nevada, uh, over the last four years, we were actually a model that a lot of people have used. Uh, he does a great job of looking at the numbers and trying to figure out where a team will project to be. And, you know, we, we, we really don't want to play anybody that's not a top team in their own conference when you talk about teams outside of, of Power 5 programs. So we're trying to play people that will challenge us uh, for SEC play. And um, I, our philosophy is, is not to pile up wins. Our philosophy is how do we become better as the season progresses, and we understand that Conference play is, is overly challenging in this league right now, but um, we want to challenge ourselves. I mean, we don't, we don't want I've, – I've been a part of a, of a staff where they just tried to figure out a way to get to 22 wins, and, and, and I've done that, and that program didn't make it to the tournament. So that's, that's not the, – the, the goal is not to try to pile up uh, wins for the media guy. The goal is to try to challenge our players and to try to give our fans – uh, really quality games, uh, whether we're playing at home or on the road. Last one. Got to get to practice. Was that your first time going to the Hall of Fame induction deal, or had you done that before? And what, just what was that whole experience like? It was to be up there. Yeah, the Hall of Fame was an awesome uh, experience. It, I had never been there before. Um, we had a great time on the plane, team bonding. Uh, it was a long night. Uh, because after the uh, after the ceremony, we went back. Um, John and, and Kevin and myself and my wife and, and Sydney and his family and his inner circle, uh, we went back to to the hotel and, and had a little conference room and everybody shared stories and uh, there was management management from the Milwaukee Bucks and it was it was kind of a once in a lifetime thing and and then personally for me, then you get to meet and see a bunch of people that maybe you haven't connected with in a long time. And I know for Ron Brewer, it was, it was really big, too, uh, for him to, to connect with, with some of the guys that he played against and played with in, in his NBA experience. And probably the coolest thing of the, of the whole experience was um, how appreciative Ron uh, and Marvin were uh, to, to be able to go um, you know, on the team plane and to celebrate and, and to be a part of it. They, those guys, it was really cool to see how excited and happy they were, uh, you know, to go and, and, and be a part of it. Thanks, you guys.